Okay, I went out to the garage, hooked it up, connected it to the scope, put a 12 volt automotive light on it to simulate a small load, and it did not work exactly as expected. Uh, I need to point out that the existing parts layout has the duty cycle and the current limiting potentiometer labels reversed. The actual layout is correct but the labeling of the potentiometers is reversed and in so doing I assembled the potentiometers to the perforated board in the wrong order. So I'm going to introduce you to another friend of mine. I'm going to have to make a couple of repairs here and uh, the friend that I'm going to introduce you to is Kemwick or another name goes by Solderwick it, uh, it is a copper braid wire that is impregnated with rosin like, uh, like the center of uh, rosin core solder only the purpose of this is when you apply heat to this on top of your work it actually sucks all of the solder out of your work so let me just show you how that works. All you do is find a clean spot, apply, it, apply the heat to the top, and it leaves the terminals that you have applied the heat to nice and clean. You can actually see it wick the solder right into the copper braid and that's how it got its name uses capillary action of the liquid solder once once it is uh, molten and melted by the soldering iron. So I'm going to have to switch these potentiometers around and go back out and try it again. Here we are out on the test bench and I have the constant current PWM connected to a 12 volt automotive light bulb. That light bulb draws about, mm, I want to say, 3 or 4 amps at 12 volts. And you'll notice on the scope I'm running at about a 50% duty cycle. My sweep rate is 0.1 milliseconds per division so I'm running this this uh, PWM right now at about 2000 Hertz if I adjust the percentage duty cycle you can see turning the duty cycle down it's a negative pulse that gives it the conductivity remember that we're pulling the negative terminal of the cell to ground so the shorter duration of that negative pulse, the less the duty cycle. And the lamp is getting dimmer and dimmer until it eventually goes out. I'll turn it back up again. And it gets brighter and brighter until I hit 100%. Come back to the 50% mark. And next I will turn down the current limiting. And you'll see what effect the current limiting has. Okay. So whatever that RMS current value is right there, the peak uh, the pulse duration has rolled back to limit to that level and no matter what load I attach to it uh, it will not allow it to draw more current than what is currently flowing through this bulb right now. So if I bring it back up and just leave it just at the point where it stabilizes then whatever that current is that will be the maximum and if I attempt to change the load it will again roll back the duty cycle. And then lastly, we have the frequency adjustment. 
and the range is from about 1000 Hz to 10,000 Hz.